Was Zenedine Zidane really that good? In this video, we are going to take a look at whether Zenedine Zidane was really that good. Give me Zidane and 10 pieces of wood and I will win you the Champions League, said Sir Alex Ferguson. I think he was born with a ball at his feet. I think when the doctor pulled him out, he said, this is weird, there's a ball here, said Emmanuel Petty. When Zidane steps on the pitch, the other 10 players around him get better, remarked Zlatan. To watch Zidane in action was to witness poetry in motion, mused Paul Scholes, with such words said about him. The question about whether Zidane was good is not even a question. The question suddenly changes to just how good Zidane was. We'll take a look at the career-defining moments of the talismanic Frenchman and why Fabien Barthez called him the best of his century, the best of all time. We'll take a look at that shortly, but before we do, we'd like to tell you that these videos come to you for free in order to show support to our channel, which is there to entertain you with the most exciting things about football. Please subscribe to us with the notification bell. Also, don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoy our videos. Okay, now that we're all set, go grab an ice cold beer and we'll dive right into how good Zidane was. What he won. Zinedine Zidane captured every major trophy there was to capture in the game of football. He won the Champions League, the World Cup, UEFA Euro Cup, Premier League at the clubs he played for and was consistently the best player in the finals. The bigger the game, the more splendid the goal came. Take a look, for example, at the audacious penalty kick he scored against Italy in the 2006 World Cup final. Can you think of anyone but Lionel Messi who would dare to do that? Or the prettiest of pretty goals he scored for Real Madrid against Bayer Leverkusen in the 2006 2002 Champions League final. It was a thing of pure instinct and the purest of goals that could have been scored by a ballerina, much less a footballer. Or the two grazing headers in the final of the 1998 World Cup against a star-studded Brazil. He is a person whose list of records as a player is as good as the way he swiveled past defenders with an ease you don't normally see with others. A nonchalance that often bordered around the edge of the insane. Effortless effort would be one way to put it. He scored the most number of goals in the World Cup final, a record he shares with Pele, Vav and Jeff Hurst. He won the most FIFA World Player of the Year awards in history and is the only player in history to win the World Cup and the European Championship and be named the best player in both of these competitions. And with such charisma and class, is it any wonder that he remained the most expensive player in history from 2001 until 2009, the beginning? One of his teammates might have joked that he was born with the football tied to his feet, but Zidane had humble beginnings. The youngest member of his family, he was born with some heavy shyness. His father was some who had fled the soon-to-be war-torn Algeria and worked odd jobs in Marseille and had modest economic privileges. And economic modesty often meant sleeping outdoors. But despite that, his parents were able to pay for Zidane's training. Watching Zidane glide across the pitch might give us the impression that it was all a seamless embroidery of poetic flow patched together. But as Thierry Henry once remarked, every move of a footballer is properly worked on and perfected. Without that, the world-class footballer never matures into something more than a talented boy who plays in his yard. And when Zidane was picked to play professionally for Cannes in the first division, his parents would allow him to become a professional under the condition that he lived with a home family as they prioritized homely atmosphere over football every day of their lives. He made 38 appearances for Cannes and scored five goals during his time there. From Cannes, he moved to Bordeaux from the 1992-93 season to play for four seasons in total. His numbers there were better than at Cannes as he was able to muster a total of 12 goals in 51 matches. Move to Juventus. Juventus. It was at Juventus that Zidane expected to touch the heights of greatness that he was destined for. People were already hearing his name everywhere, thanks largely to the aura he was able to create in the matches he played in. Besides, when Zidane joined Juventus, they were fresh off a Champions League title. They hoped that with the introduction of Zidane, they would touch new heights. In the first season at the club, he was able to score seven goals in a total of 44 matches. What was more impressive than his goal tally was the way he could thread balls through a defense. And in his very first season at Juventus, he was named the best foreign player in Serie A. He won the Serie A in the first two seasons with the club and also finished as the UEFA Champions League runners-up. He also won the UEFA Super Cup with them, but after stellar performances in the World Cup and the European Championships two years later, Zidane had cemented his position amongst the very finest to have ever played the game and a world record transfer fee was looming. His World Cup heroics and European Championship display. With Zidane, it could be said that the bigger the match, the more he stepped out onto the pitch. The two headers against Brazil in the 1998 FIFA World Cup final are a proof of that. 
He was scintillating throughout the rest of the tournament too, and eventually won the 1998 Ballon d'Or. The same rang true of the 2000 European Championship, where he scored or played a vital part in the goals scored in the quarterfinals, semi-finals, as well as the final of the European Championship. This is why he won the Ballon d'Or that season too. Moved to Real Madrid, with a name that is synonymous to the legendary status that Real Madrid have these days. For example, Florentino Perez, having set his sights on this brilliant French international who could dominate the game without scoring any goals. It was only a matter of time before Zidane made a move to Real Madrid. He did so after after setting a record for the highest transfer fee of that time, 75 million euros, and deservedly so at that. Zizou mania was in full swing, where every Real Madrid fan was mesmerized by the string of passes he could thread, often leaving his opponents flummoxed with his ballet dancer-like turns that were dubbed Zizou turns, and the overall aura that the great Galacticos of that time had. With Ronaldo, Beckham, Roberto Carlos at the time, we would predict that the team would dominate every game, but being top-heavy meant that they didn't win the titles expected of them. In the five seasons, he played for Real Madrid. He scored a total of 49 goals for them, many of which were picturesque. When Zizou decided to hang up his boots after the 2006 season, he was asked by many not to retire, and Madrid even offered him 6 million euros per year. But Zizou didn't want to play for the club when the peak of his powers had already been lost. This is something that Real Madrid fans always admired about him. His impact at Real Madrid can be summed up in Rory Smith's assessment of the goal that helped Real Madrid win the Champions League. It was the moment of Zidane's apotheosis. More so, than the 1998 World Cup final. Because of the moment's grace and beauty, because of his control of everything around him, he was Bruce Lee in slow motion while Kung Fu chaos reigned around, an ending that no one expected. Zizou had decided to hang up his boots for the national team in 2004, after the furore that followed the 2002 World Cup where France were eliminated from the group stages, and the Euro Cup where they were eliminated in the quarterfinals by Greece. Zizou announced his retirement. At the age of 32, people believed that the Frenchman still had a lot to offer for the team, so he came back from retirement for the 2006 World Cup. His most mesmerizing performance came against the Brazilians in the quarterfinals, where many believed that he had brought the gods along with him, wriggling and tiptoeing his way past the Brazil of Ronaldo and Kaká and Ronaldinho. He also assisted Henri for the deciding goal of the match. In the semi-finals against Portugal, he scored a penalty that sent France to the finals. The finals opened up with Zidane scoring the most audacious of chips from the spot kick, past Gigi. Italy soon equalized, but in a moment of madness perhaps, Zidane headbutted Matarazzi in the chest a violent burst of anger that Zidane was known to have. This is one of the reasons why he also holds the record for the most number of red cards in FIFA World Cup matches. Zidane was sent off after the game, and his solemn walk past the World Cup 2006 is one of the most iconic in the game's recent history. The only other image that is comparable to that is Lionel Messi doing the same after their defeat at the hands of Germans in the 2014 World Cup. Despite a timid end, he was named the best player of the tournament by FIFA. In 2011, Zidane was named the best player of the Champions League for the past 20 years. He was also awarded a silver medal in the FIFA Best Player of the Year award. He belongs to Real Madrid's greatest 11 of all time, as well as the World Soccer greatest 11 of all time. There are not many world best teams that you can pick without the maestro that is Zidane. Before social media ran riots comparing the Ballon d'Ors of Messi and Ronaldo, Zidane and Ronaldo Phenomeno had shared three Ballon d'Ors apiece. At what heights people would have placed him if he was born in the social media era is something we don't know, but to say that Zidane is one of the best of all time, if not the best of all time, is something that cannot be taken away from him. Where do you rank Zizou in the list of the best players of all time? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to send us a thumbs up in case you liked the video. Please subscribe to our channel to not miss out on new videos. We'll see you soon with a new footballing video, but in the meanwhile, you can watch the video on the screen now.